Greetings to everyone here this evening. This is Red Labor. Welcome to another YouTube uh, political commentary uh, today. And I hope this day finds you well. Um, it is April 22nd, and um, we're just a few days away from April 25th. April 25th will be the 39th anniversary of the Portuguese Carnation Revolution, which took place on April 25th, 1974. And since it's the 39th anniversary and not the 40th, I will just touch lightly upon the significance of this revolution this year and make a big deal next year uh, here on this YouTube channel. Well, let me just give you a brief, um, brief, uh, a brief, uh, briefing on the what happened in, and transpired in Portugal. Portugal was uh, ruled by uh, Antonio Salazar from 1932 to around 1970. I believe that's the date he died. Uh, he formed what was called the Estado Novo, it was Portuguese, which means new state. It was a fascism of sorts, um, not the extreme fascism of Italy or the really, really extreme fascism that existed in Nazi Germany, but it was fascist enough. A military, a right wing military, one party state, um, with basically, um, basically an all powerful um, Catholic Church that. Uh, that oppressed, uh, that oppressed um, leftists, oppressed um, non-Catholics, oppressed uh, anybody that was opposed to to the regime of Antonio Salazar. Um, in spite of his death in 1970, uh, his government lasted another four years. Uh, there was a there was Portuguese states is still one of the last colonial states in, in Europe at the time, and they had uh, they occupied Angola, Mozambique, uh, Guinea, all around the world, and there was turmoil in the uh, various colonies Portugal were uh, occupying at the time. A lot of uh, a lot of um, crimes against humanity were taking place against the uh, against the. Uh, people that, that Portugal were oppressing us. And the military, certain factions of the military were tired of this and tired again of, uh, about the crimes against humanity and it was bothering their conscience. And they were radicalized. A uh, combination of just the human decency factor of seeing people being oppressed, but it was also, it was also um, various leftist ideologies that, uh, that they embraced. Anywhere from uh, from uh, the moderate social democratic uh, politics that was mainstream Western Europe, all the way to pro-Soviet style communism, assortment of Trotskyist ideologies, and, and any other form of leftism that existed. Most of them were probably more social democratic than anything else, politically speaking. And they formed what was called a um, the Armed Forces Movement. With this Armed Forces Movement, they wanted to have a bloodless, a bloodless coup to uh, to dismantle the Portuguese Empire, have democracy, have democracy in Portugal itself. Essentially, what happened on that day, which is odd in a wonderful way, there was a standoff between the um, between the government and the rebel factions of the military, and to um, put everything in a nutshell. The government ordered the military that were uh, that were supposedly loyal to the government to fire against the rebels of the armed forces movement. They basically disobeyed orders, joined the other side, and the Portuguese regime collapsed right there and then. And a new government basically was formed. It was one of the most peaceful revolutions uh, ever recorded. A, a nearly bloodless coup. Four people, however, did die uh, on that day. Uh, the, uh, their spy agency called the PIDE, P -I -D -E, um, opened fire, uh, murdered four, four people in downtown Lisbon. Uh, but to make a long story short, Portugal will become a democracy as a result. And, um, and the uh, colonies in Africa and in 
most of like Guinea and East Asia would be, would be granted their independence. And Portugal today is one of the youngest democracies in West Europe, to, uh, and this came about because of the Carnation Revolution. Why Carnation? Why do they call it? Why do they call it the Carnation Revolution? Well, people were celebrating. They celebrated with the topple of a fascist government. There were carnations littered all over the streets. Soldiers were wearing carnations on their uniforms, their rifle barrels, on the cannons, cannons of the tanks. And therefore, it would be called the Carnation Revolution. Portugal would become, as I said, a free society as a result. And for those on the political right that said socialism equals tyranny, the, the, the Carnation Revolution proves that socialism leads to liberty, it leads to more freedom, it leads to more democracy, not less. So the Tea Party needs to have a freaking lesson when it comes to liberty and, and freedom. But of course, if the Tea Party would have been around in Portugal in 1974, they would have taken the side of the clerical fascists and not the side of those favoring freedom for the people of Portugal. Now, today, Portugal has freedom of speech, freedom of the press. Just a few short years ago, two years ago, I believe, they uh, legalized same-sex marriage. So, to the people of Portugal, thumbs up for, for the Carnation Revolution. You have one American socialist completely grateful for what you guys did 39 years ago. We need more of it around the world, not less of it. People, I don't care what political ideology you are, go online, check out the Carnation Revolution. There's even a movie called April Captain, uh, which is in Portuguese, subtitles in English. I own the movie, it stars Mercedes Madrias, who was in... Uh, in Pulp Fiction, Bruce Willis' girlfriend. Yeah, he's the star director of the movie. Anyhow, uh, check up on the movie. Feel free to comment. Give me your good comments, your bad comments, your indifferent comments. Just say something to me, and uh, I'll talk with you. I'll talk along with you, and if you make me mad, I'll talk back at you. But just, we'll, we'll start a dialogue. Take care, and have a great day, and happy... 39th anniversary to the people of Portugal.